easy to do this forever. <laughs> Ground effect. What causes it and in what way do we interact with it as pilots? Let me take you to paint to explain. It's a well understood concept of aerodynamics that wings generate a high pressure below them and a low pressure above them. And it's this interaction in part which generates the lift on the wing surface. We also understand that a high pressure air mass tends to travel towards the low pressure to equalize out this pressure difference. On our aircraft's wing, this results in the high pressure air moving outward towards the tips underneath the wing and upon reaching it creating wingtip vortices on either side and this increases the wing drag. Now looking to my drawing here of a wing on the side on view. Any wing that is generating lift with a positive angle of attack, that is the air mass which is coming from this direction, has an angle here to the wing will be generating lift not directly up but rather perpendicular to the underside of the wing. This is the direction of lift generation that a wing has. It's not quite this extreme but for exaggeration it's in the direction to the rear of the aircraft. Hence what is actually being generated is a significant vector of lift upwards, that's the lift that we use to, to fly, um, but also there's lift being generated backwards, if you wish. That is, it's generating drag. So now let's look to an aircraft and ground effect. Um, to have this effect, it needs to fly less than half its total wingspan above the ground. So in this case, the aircraft is still having this high pressure and low pressure zone above and below its wings. And in this case, this high pressure zone below the wing is going to interact with the ground to create a ground effect. So this high pressure air as it moves outward like this either along the wing or downward away from the wing it's going to be reflected back from the ground which obviously doesn't give back into the wing and this is this cushioning effect that you may feel when you're close to the ground. This air as it can't move away from the wing is pushing up against it and that's the ground effect. So again looking to our wing on the side on view, this time in ground effect, that extra reflected air that's coming off the ground, uh, cushioning the underside of the wing, pushes the wing upward. So you can think of it as the wing experiencing a larger lift vector as it's in ground effect. This cushioning effect also inhibits the air's movement outward along towards the wing tip and so your wingtip vortices when you're in ground effect are far less pronounced. So these two effects of a wing generating more lift when it's closer to the ground, as well as a decrease in wingtip vortice generation, both combine to reduce the amount of energy a aircraft needs to remain in flight. And this reduction is by no means minimal. You can see when a glider is in ground effect the significantly slower speed that the airspeed of the aircraft washes off as it maintains the same altitude. And you can even look to projects such as the Soviet-built Akrano plan that could only fly when traveling over water using the ground effect. Yeah. I've got a few other clips now demonstrating the ground effect. Here I want you to look at the airspeed indicator as the needle moves from barely 51 knots down to 42 over this whole period. Please note these were done on completely calm days with zero wind and done by an experienced instructor and are not to be imitated. They are only a demonstration and done for learning purposes. And here's two perspectives of the same manoeuvre in full. I hope you learned something and enjoyed.